Psalms 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 2 Timothy 3 verse 14 to 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of, because you know those from whom you've learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith. In Christ Jesus. All scriptures is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking and correcting and training in rightfulnesses, so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Oh, beautifully read there by, by Sophie. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Kirsty. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm one of the team here at St. Saviour's. So we're in the middle of a a series called Grow, and Sonia spoke to us last week on on praise, and today's topic is eat. I love to eat. I love food, and actually I'm on this strict regime at the moment, which is called something called intermittent fasting. I don't know if some of you have heard of that. So I do all my eating in one window. Unfortunately for me, that happens to be the McDonald's drive through but <laughs> let's pray. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that we can gather here this morning and sing your praise. Lord, as we hear your word, help our ears and hearts be open to receive whatever it is that you've got to say to each one of us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, when I read the, t- the title of this topic, Eat, I was a little bit confused to begin with. But there is another type of food that we need to sustain us, and that is the Word of God. Now, can I have the picture up, please? Does anyone know who this is? Kids, come on. Yes. Yeah, this is Mr. Beast. Okay, so this is Mr. Beast, and he is the biggest YouTuber in the world. And he has over, I heard this morning, it's actually gone up to 300 million subscribers. Now, he created something called the Beastification of YouTube. So basically, he was the first influencer to create something called retention editing. Now, that was designed to keep us visually engaged to the content on social media, Obviously worked extremely well for him. Now, the rule was each clip should be no longer than two seconds and be full of deliberately bright, flashy, loud content. By doing this, the research shows they're literally tricking our brains into believing we're being entertained, irrelevant of the content. Now, this has now been proven to be addictive. And this has become like a big problem for the end user. That's us. Now, I found some research by the great theologian Google that states that Gen Z in particular are now having all sorts of trouble being able to focus. Now, it states the impact of retention editing is that we're now a world full of a, a, with a multi-generational problem of having a very short attention span. Now, because of things like TikTok, Instagram, our brains are now struggling to focus on anything more substantial. That is a really scary thought, right? In our frantic world of information overload that's competing for our attention, it's crucial that we learn to to slow down, take time to absorb the information that we're consuming. Now, this is especially true in our reading and meditating on the Word of God. It couldn't be more important right now. So we're going to start, Nathan's going to come and join me, by playing a little game this morning. Okay, so it's going to be this side, you'll be classed as left, and this side as right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to It shouldn't be too difficult because I know you're all a bunch of studious theologians here this morning, aren't you? So I'm going to read out some Bible verses and you get one point 
if you can just tell me what book of the Bible it comes from, yeah? Kids, this is for you as well. I know that you've been doing some memory verses. I have included them. Let's see how your retention editing is affecting you. Okay, are we ready? Now, I will give bonus points if you can actually tell me chapter and verse. Okay, now we're starting easy. Are we ready? Okay, for this side first. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Shout it out. Come on, where's it from? Oh, very good. So they get two points. Round of applause. Excellent. They get two. Yeah, that's left, left. So two points. Excellent start, left. Okay. Are we ready this side? For I know the plans I have for you says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Woohoo! There we go. Two points. Round of applause. Come on, guys. That's good. That's good. Okay, we start getting a little bit harder now. Okay, this side. Are you ready? Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. Sorry, Tom. What is it? Well, six to eight. Well done. They, they get that. Excellent. Round of applause. Excellent job. Excellent job. Okay. Are we ready this side? This is one of my favorite. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will help you and strengthen you and lift you up with my victorious right hand. It's, I'll give you a clue. It's a prophet. Isaiah, well done. Do we know? Can we have a guess what chapter it might be? It's this side. It's this side. It's this side. So do, we get a, do we pass it over? Well done. Yes, Christine got it. It's Isaiah 41.10. Okay, well done. Good job. Okay, are we ready this side? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Not Genesis. John, well, man, well done. Yeah, two points to the left. Well done. Okay, this is getting, I feel like you guys have got the harder ones. Okay, are we ready? Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. It's an epistle, it's a letter. Yes, Romans, well done, they get a point for that. Do you want to take a guess what, where it is? Nearly. Add four. (laughs) There you go, Romans 12. I think we can only give them one point for that. Well done. Okay, are we ready this side? My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. We have silence. It's an epistle, it's a letter. Have a guess. Rhymes with Corinthians. <laughs> Do we know whether it's one or two? Two Corinthians, well done. Two Corinthians, 12, 8. Well, uh, no, sorry, 12, 8, yeah, I'm right. Two Corinthians, 12, 8. What do you write? You decide. You can decide. He's going to be the decider of the points today. Okay, well, okay. Nathan's, Nathan's a decider. Okay, last one. Okay, come on, come on. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Well done. She, well done. Awesome. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Nathan. What was it? Oh, it's a tie. Yay! We all get to win. Yay! Yeah. Well done.
Well done. Thank you, Nathan. That's amazing. Thank you, darling. So why should we read the Bible? I've got three short points that may help encourage us all this morning. And they all begin with G to help you remember. Okay, so first of all, it's God's word. It's his message to humanity. In the words of the Pope, it's God's love letter to each one of us. Now, all scripture is God-breathed. So it's God speaking to us. When we read our Bibles, we feel closer to him. We learn about his character. He reveals himself to us. He reveals his everlasting love for us. Which means that we grow in our relationship with him. Because we get to know him better. And our faith deepens. Do I actually need to go on here? (laughs) So it's God's word. It's his love letter to us. What else is it? It's his guidance for us. Now I want you all to imagine now. You've gone on an amazing hike with your friends and family. You're in a dense forest. You're walking around enjoying all the beautiful scenery and all the beautiful animals. But you lose track of time. And darkness is all around you. And it's impossible to see the path. Fortunately, you have a lamp in your backpack. And when you turn it on, you can see exactly where you need to go. This is how the Bible works in our lives. Now, the scripture that um, Sophie beautifully read for us in, in Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Wow. Without scripture, we're stumbling around in darkness, uncertain of, of which way to go. If we read our, part, our Bible, our path is illuminated and we can navigate life's challenges with clarity and confidence. It's like our instruction manual. Now, just recently, I got a new phone. Isn't it amazing when you get the new Apple box? It's like, ah! I was so excited. I took it out and I just started attempting to use it. But for some weird reason, some of the features weren't working properly and the apps weren't doing what I actually expected. I got so frustrated, I nearly threw the phone against the wall. Obviously, I didn't. But when I read the manual, it all made sense. The the features, I discovered functions that I never knew existed and I realized I'd actually been doing it all wrong. Now, our lives are a little like my phone. The Bible is our instruction manual. It helps us understand how to live our life effectively and fulfill our purpose. And that's the purpose that God has set out for each and every one of us. When we ignore scripture, we miss out on the wisdom and the guidance that God has provided for us, leaving us frustrated and unfulfilled. So, it's God's word, it's his guidance, and finally, it's God's power for us. It's our source of strength and comfort. Now, we all face tough times in our lives, and scripture provides us the comfort and the strength we need to keep going. Psalm 46, one reminds us that God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. And a large part of that help is found in Scripture. Now, Jesus knew this better than anyone. Remember when he was at his weakest point in the wilderness? How long was he there for, young people? Can you remember? How long was Jesus in the desert, in the wilderness? 40 days and 40 nights, absolutely. And who came? The devil came to tempt him. He came to try and distract him, to lie to him, to make him give in to his earthly desires. But how did he find the strength to fight back? What did he say? Yes, it is written. It is written. Each time the devil came for him, he used scripture to to bat him off. He used God's word to find the strength he needed to 
to beat temptation, to beat distraction, to overcome darkness, to find comfort and to take the victory. That's why it's it's always a good idea to memorize some verses to have in your back pocket when you need it. Scripture tells us that in John 14, 26, that the, the Holy Spirit will teach us all things then he'll remind us of those things we already know in the moments that we need them. Whatever you're facing this morning, whether you need God's love letter, his guidance, his comfort and strength, it's right there for you. All we have to do is take it. What helps sometimes is to set a regular time each day to read your Bible. Whatever works for you and your schedule. Now, my daughter, Darcy, has been talking about training for this competition called High Rocks. Has anyone heard of it? No, it's an event, a comp- it's an event designed to test the physical stamina and the functional strength of an athlete. So to compete in it, it takes a strict daily regime of physical training but it's the consistency of the training that builds the endurance and prepares them for the race now in the same way the bible is a spiritual discipline that prepares us for life's challenges now just as an athlete builds physical strength through physical exercise we build spiritual strength through reading scripture regularly Now, if you're new to the Bible, start small. Try reading just a a chapter a day. You don't have to read a lot for God to speak to you. I'm going to say that again. You don't have to read a lot for God to speak to you. I can find that I can read the same passage three times on three different days, and God will give me a different message each time. Pray for understanding. I always ask God to reveal himself to me before I start reading the Bible. We aren't meant to understand it in our own strength. As we read God's word, spirit to spirit, it breathes out power and revelation. Have you ever had that moment when you've read a passage and it's like a ding, like a light bulb moment, and you're like, oh, wow. If, that's, if you're anything like me and you have traits of ADHD or you're possibly battling the consequences of retention editing, possibly even right now in this sermon, <laughs> um, you may struggle to focus on the Bible. If that's you, you're not alone. I can often find my mind wandering off at times. But there's so many resources now that can help us combat that issue. Darcy and I do this three-minute teen Bible study each night together just so we can fix our eyes on Jesus before she goes to bed. But I like using like Lexio 365 app and Pray As You Go app and the Bible in a year. And I find that the atmospheric music helps bring me into a, a worshipful mindset before I start reading Scripture. I find that to be a crucial aspect to being able to absorb the words as prayer and conversation rather than just words on a page. You could join a group. We have a lovely Bible study here once a a month. And studying the Bible with others can be an invaluable tool to help bring revelation and insight. Whatever it is that helps you to engage with the living God and the word of God, it will change your life. Reading the Bible is not just a a religious duty. It's a privilege, a blessing. It's how we hear from God. It lights our path, nourishes our souls, guides our actions, reveals hidden treasures, and builds our spiritual strength. Amen?